Okay, hey guys, welcome back to Parkitect. In this campaign episode, we're going to be jumping into Silica Slopes. So it says you require a small plot of land in a desolate forested valley. Use what little space you have at your disposal to build a charming amusement park. You can buy more land to expand the park, but you cannot get any loans. Oh, that's a trick. Okay, um, goal is 450 guests. We have overall park rating of 85%, 250 guests is optional, and then beat by year four. Oh, beat by year four? Oh, so they give us an extra two years because, well, there's no loans. So let's go see what the park looks like. Um, I'm curious on what will work, especially for this scenario. It's a very hilly scenario. Yeah, you can tell from the map, like, there's a lot of hills so the plot of land we can buy is up here and over here okay how much is land eight dollars a tile that's not bad that's actually very cheap so technically speaking like if i wanted to buy this this would cost me three thousand dollars right off the bat or i buy this one at four thousand okay so we have fifteen thousand to use what is my ride selection? <sighs> Not good. Carousel, Ferris wheel, swinging ship, mini coaster, steel coaster. Okay, steel coaster has to be built first. No transports and a paddle boat. Hmm. Yeah. What are food? Wow, we have food. We have food stalls. That's good. So hot dogs, pizza, turkey legs, toilets. All good stuff. What's my scenery look like? Ooh. No steamworks, no sci-fi, no fa no fantasy. That makes no sense. This is like a fantasy build, or like a fantasy map. I would say. Hmm. I want fantasy. But I do have an idea of building some type of kingdom slash castle type of thing. I've been. What I really want to do is like a really detailed castle, like from, um. Like Disneyland, not necessarily. Like, um, the one that I'm more thinking about is like Hong Kong Disneyland's castle is pretty epic looking because it's very fancy, very fanciful. Lots of spires, lots of interesting color palette. I also like the Shanghai Disneyland's castle as well. How crazy and big it is! So I'm thinking like the castle could sit on top of this mountain here, and then the village will be down here, and that's kind of what I want to do for the theme i've been playing around with some like th um thatched roof ideas with shapes and stuff to make it more cartoony make it more fantasy like but if there's no fantasy pieces that's something i need to research but the first thing to do i think i think i want to research coasters first yeah i should research coasters first because i want more coasters and more options because right now just a steel and a mini Oh man, I know I have to I have to I have to build a coaster first to get money. I just have to figure out where I'm going to build it first. Here over there. But Oh yeah, here's the depot. Okay, I didn't look at the depot first. So this is not covered. That has to get fixed. Depot's pretty simple, but I know that the decoration rating is really bad right now. Yeah, it's really bad. Okay. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, so no loan debts or no loans to pull out because it says zero. So we can't do, worry about that. So we have to fully base everything off the, sh the rides that I built first and price them correctly and then build from there. But I'm thinking about buying land first, maybe little bits of land so I can start working on areas. Yeah, let's see what happens. But let's jump on to building some type of kingdom slash castle area and then let's see where this uh, hilly terrain takes me okay let's get started the first things first is to buy land and to delete the little hut off to the side that the map gives you and then build our my first ride this is literally i don't really don't do this especially in campaign play but i needed to build a pretty good coaster to fund my building habits for this campaign so i went for a normal lsm launch steel coaster like prometheus 
was it Prometheus or no, it's not Prometheus. It's called, um, oh, I forgot. It's in the Six Flags Park. It's a spaghetti bowl coaster. I'm kind of copying it. It's not Prometheus. I forgot. Poltergeist. That's the name. Also, it was called uh, Joker's, I think it's called Joker's Hij Hijinks or something like that. But I think it's called right now Poltergeist. So I built that first. And then after having that coaster basically fund, well, it's going to start funding my projects. I need to build my first set of buildings. This is usually my experimentals. These are my prototypes that will kind of dictate what is going to be built in this scenario. The main idea for this scenario was more of a, like a typical... Well, the main inspiration actually, it comes from a couple places. So there's a kingdom called um, Corona from the movie Tangled. I like how that whole kingdom was on an island and kind of set on top of itself. So like the village is underneath and there's a winding road that goes up to the castle. I originally liked that idea. And then also got more inspiration from Disneyland Hong Kong's Castle of Dreams, which looks really fantastic. So the idea was to build a village and then a castle to be on top of the hill. Being Silica Slopes, and it's all slopes and hills, I had to figure out what to use these things for. I want to build... I want to try to incorporate the mountain as best I can without flattening it, because I honestly you can cheese this scenario by flattening it and then winning the map quite easily. So you can just see here I'm doing some thatched roofs, some thatched roofing out of shapes, cylinders for the wooden posts on the side, and then build a secondary house next to it. This is a restroom stand. And I think the first building is just holds one restaurant or two just for a snack stand, kind of. And then there's some backstage stuff going on in the back as well with a um, break room for the employees. But this section of buildings is just the experimentation of what the rest of the map will dictate. And to kind of get my bearings. I always, when you, look, when you have the um, empty page syndrome, where you just look at an empty map or a page, if you're trying to write something or draw, it, it, you need to put things down. As long as you start putting some things as like, like shapes, colors, a tree, a fence, a wall, if you do that, it will start developing. It's kind of the same idea here. I kind of did the same as well. I kind of just plopped down shapes and stuff to get my the imagination flowing, stuff like that. So since the steel coaster was already put in, I was already making some money. At this point, I have $23,000. My funding is already great. I mean, think at this point in the scenario, I already put down a carousel, a steel coaster, and that's it. That's all I needed. And I think the coaster's priced at 12 bucks at the moment. I bump it to 15 but as I'm rambling, I should talk about this little, little, little thing I did here. So also in this scenario, especially, I did some, a lot of prototyping and experimentation with new roofing. And I think this is a cool technique for any new builder or even experienced builders to use a prototyping mindset. Real theme parks do this, by the way. So Universal, Disneyland, um, maybe even Cedar Fair. They do prototyping out in the middle of nowhere to test out how the sun or the light would affect a prop and to test out colors or test out shaping. So I did that for a roof for my steel coaster. The steel coaster is going to be themed to a blacksmith shop. It's a gigantic blacksmith shop, by the way. Nothing realistic would be ever built like this, but in a theme park, it would be. It would just be something, something too crazy. So what else to talk about besides roofing that I'm doing this gradient style for it uh, main inspiration for this type of building was from lego sets i was browsing through uh, instagram saw some blacksmith shops and some taverns and lego seems to be a very good resource to pull from because lego and park tech kind of run on the same vein it's you have a set number of pieces and those pieces are, you're supposed to make something out of it. So the same thing with Parkitect. Parkitect is the same thing. So you have a set number of vanilla parts and you're supposed to build something. That's kind of what I feel like both, both mediums are kind of the same vein. That's probably why I like Parkitect a lot because I do like Lego a lot. I do a lot of mock building on my, uh, in my spare time besides playing Parkitect. So I do both back and forth. It's just how it goes. 
So here I'm just doing detail work. Uh, again, all this grunt work that I normally do. So adding details, adding some pillars, roof detailing, and also thinking mechanically what needs to be built for the park to succeed. Because being this far back, I needed to build... Yeah, I built a break room for that backstage area. I, I wanted to add some more... Let's see, what am I adding? I'm add, I like to add some realism to it. That's why I added that concrete building in the back of the uh, this blacksmith shop. Just to give some more realism to it. Kind of gives it a charm too. Kind of gives that illusion that, guess what, this is our working theme park. So here's the backstage building. The roofing actually changes color soon because I went from a dark gradient from dark to blight from top to bottom and I switch it to bottom to top you'll see that change in a second I think also the colors get more vi vibrant because I think yeah here it comes yeah I, this was brought up to me on discord and that was a good suggestion because I didn't think about that what I'm trying to accomplish here is that the roofing is aging in a weird way yeah, it's aging. So it will be lighter on top because of the sun and darker toward the bottom. And again, I wanted to try a different roof technique. I I, I thought I was done making custom roofing. I'm not. <laughs> this is just one step up. Here we go. More custom roofing that we continue to do. It just continues. Adding some more... I'm going to call these gingerbreading that's on top of the roofs. Maybe just greeblies, because it's just like wooden timber that kind of just sticks out. Adds a decorational element to said building. I do like this building a lot. It's like one of my favorites out of this whole build so far. And the coaster fits well. I think I called the... What did I name the coaster? I, I named it Iron Strike, so it's kind of a blacksmithy theme. I should have done more to the area to kind of help with the uh, blacksmith's theme. So I was going to make a custom sign kind of ran out of steam at the end so I kind of skipped that. I might add it later off, um, off camera. Maybe not. I usually say I should but I'm not going to. Here's some more prototyping. It's always a good exercise for you to try out some things without really de dedicating to that process. So I'm testing out some uh, lower brick foundation work for the tavern that I'm going to build next to the blacksmith shop. And using these shapes, I don't remember what cube size I did, but it was kind of a little complicated to kind of put it in. Well, it was kind of complicated for the spacing between bricks, because I wanted that little slit in between the bricks to say that there's mortar there. That's kind of what I'm trying to, to elude here. So that kind of worked out. And then the tavern's actually one of the bigger buildings. And I picked a, such a weird space here, I just realized. But I'm also letting the um, the environment dictate where buildings go, because I don't want to I don't want to flatten the mountains or the hills. I want to keep them as hilly as possible, to suggest that the village is kind of adapted and built on top of the hill. And that's what I'm aiming for. I'm trying to not delete as much. Well, I'm trying not to edit as much terrain. I will edit terrain if I need to if it looks weird, or to get rid of the um. The weird tunneling effect on top of paths or coasters, got to remove that. I'm glad this scenario allows me, because if it didn't, I think I would be in a harder position building than if it, yeah, if it wasn't available. Here's some more prototyping. Roofing for the same gradient type of roofing, but I wanted to use a different piece, and I used a pyramid piece. I think it was a 45 degree, just to make it look like shingles. This was a weird technique, but it's kind of worked. I just didn't realize how... Again, I'm, I'm experimenting. And it's okay to experiment. If you're working on a project, experiment. You'll be surprised what could be developed out of that. And don't be afraid if it looks weird or not. Because I had some uh, second-guessing work when I was developing this new technique. It's a little bit far from my normal techniques. I usually use cylinders or cubes for roofing, but using a pyramid piece actually kind of worked out. And it gives a different characteristic to this building versus the blacksmith shop because I want to call that these are um, my hero buildings. <laughs> it's so funny. This is like my, yeah, it, hero, yeah, hero building, kind of like the, the building that kind of stands out. Just trying to remember, where did I hear hero? 
term, that hero term from. I think it was an imaginary thing. I think it was. I might be wrong. Um, but it's kind of, the, the definition would be this building is, is kind of over the top and kind of drags your eye from the other buildings. So that's why the tavern and the blacksmith shops both have a distinct color to them. So the tavern's red with this um, beer sign and then the blacksmith shop is blue because it's kind of like the iron blue or iron I don't know, maybe kind of like that, but I, those are my hero buildings. And then everything else is going to be built on a, built with um, hay thatched roofing, just to kind of contrast between the hero buildings and the not hero buildings, or just your supporting buildings, as I kind of put it. It's, it's kind of funny because um, building a theme park is kind of like actors in a movie so you have your leading you have your supporting it's kind of the same here you you want to have buildings that kind of hold up the theme and you have your other buildings kind of flush out your environment and kind of tell the rest of the story off site kind of like telling your guests okay this is the main structure but these buildings kind of suggest the other story going on here too so that's kind of why i'm doing here with the other buildings i'm going to kind of this cluster right here kind of actually i utilize this to cover up the Motion simulator, because I need another ride. And to kind of portray that the village kind of built themselves on top of each other. Because this is the only space they had to build. And it kind of worked out. I kind of covered most of the mountain, but I did that on purpose. Yeah, it kind of, it starts forming itself after I got my big hero buildings in. So the tavern, the blacksmiths, and then now doing these buildings kind of help tell the story more. So it's just a lot of repeat of the same thing. So I did a lot of thatch roofing, wooden supports, um, borders. Um, I made sure every thatched roof was like in a different aging color. So brighter would be new, newest thatched to a little bit darker yellow is like old and worn down already or weathered. Um, every building had a different textured wall. So you, I bounced between, there's a... Uh, a generic wall that's just wooden slats across and then there's the Halloween pack walls or the spooky walls. I kind of went from back and forth and then I went back to stucco as well. So I went for like three different types of walls to kind of give each building its own characteristics. Because uh, I'm imagining that these buildings were built by individual people kind of following the same terms of uh, construction and then just kind of here's our house right next to the neighbor's house. Um, I did some cool custom uh, doors out of crates and a vase jar or jar you can say jar i use the handle as the handle of the door and i kind of like this texturing of the thatched roofing versus when i did thatched roofing for archipelago adventures i actually used bushes but in this case i wanted to keep everything more cartoony because the inspiration was from like tangled and from disney on hong kong i wanted to give it more of a clip art look for this park versus using thatched roofing bushes, like using actual bushes for the thatched roofing, which I've done before. So this is kind of a, a mix, but also in thought of that, I wanted to, the thatched roofing to match the same, uh, the match the buildings with the gradient colors. Cause I wanted to make sure that they're from the same universe. Cause if I did thatched roofing, I think it would, it would distract you a little bit cause it's a little bit more detailed than it should be. So, Going for less detail kind of actually gives it more. More is less than a kind of way. It's weird. It's a weird concept, but that's how I felt when I was working on these roofs versus the other techniques I've done before in the past. So, more roofing, more detailing of brickwork and stuff. Yeah, I've seen me do this thousands of times at this point. Nothing really, nothing new, nothing really new to in, inform you besides try it, test it out, see how it is. It, it is very um, system heavy, so you have to be brave to handle it. It takes up a lot of resources, especially when I got my new um, graphics card and CPU. It's it's run better, but for people who have a lower sense or lower specs, beware to run this map at at least. Hopefully not single digits, but maybe like 15 FPS. But yeah, this is the 
this is the end of this time lapse actually so um, I'm gonna finish up detailing and things on the roofs and stuff and then we're gonna take a quick tour of how the park operates and see what the next step of construction is going to be okay let's get on to see how the park is doing hey wait a minute where are my buildings go oh, give me a second there we go much better now let's get on to um the rest of the park because that was a little uh weird wasn't it so let's see here after we got those buildings back let's get on to how the park is looking at the moment so there's a well there's a lot going on here so at the point at this moment the village is basically done for the whole kingdom idea that i had and there's just a lot of buildings here you can just tell there's a lot I don't know, there's just a good handful of 20 buildings here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, 17 buildings, 18 buildings, something like that. So I just finished off camera, like finishing up these buildings and stuff like that, and then added additional facilities, like there's a restroom here, there's a restroom inside the tavern. I made this diagonal building just to add some more interest, and then added this flat right down here, the... Um, What's this one called again? This is called the Experience. The Experience. And then Iron Strike, which is the main coaster so far. I'm planning on doing a like a ride sign right here. If I build a little sign that says Iron Strike, maybe with like pickaxes or something, that'd be cool. But yeah, the coaster seems to be doing pretty well. I mean, at this point, I'm year 12 in. I got tons of money, so I can do whatever I want at this point. There's nothing to really worry about. The plan is to build the castle on top of this hill. This little dirt path here is kind of like the idea of a winding pathway up to the castle, up to its like gates and the castle grounds, and then build a gigantic castle like um, Hogwarts, not Hogwarts, well, kind of like Hogwarts, but more like um, Hong Kong Disneyland's castle. There's the VV castle is just ridiculous. Same thing with Shanghai. I want to do like a mix of both and kind of make this majestic, gigantic castle with spires and like a... Um, I want to do this type of roofing on the castle. That's kind of why I tested it over here a little bit. So that's kind of the idea. And then maybe fill in some bottom, fill in some stuff at the bottom here. I don't know what I could do. Like some, maybe some more flat rides. I got everything. I actually researched everything. This is all we got for the rest of the scenario. Oh, I got a lock flume. Oh yeah, river rapids. I was thinking about river rapids. Like if I built it in the castle, I could build it down here or something. That'll be interesting. Got a mine train, don't need to build another mine train. <clears throat> I could build a floorless or flying coaster. Maybe something themed to like a dragon. That'd be cool. I don't know, I'm just still thinking of things to do, but yeah, here's the whole um, kingdom so far. But yeah, let's um, get on to phase two. And that is to build the castle and see what other rides I get to build because at this point, I think I'm going to get the goal and then finish the map. So let's get building. Okay, let's get started on to the next construction phase is going to be uh, the castle, finally. This is where I wrap up the map and work on this majestic castle that is going to be designed after the Castle of Dreams from Hong Kong Disneyland, but it's kind of like my own version. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. This castle is going to be the station for the last ride added to that, which is going to be a flying coaster. That's the objective there. But first I needed to figure out the position of the castle. I knew I wanted it to be directly on top of the mountain here, or hill. It's a mountain, it's pretty tall. And to make my life harder, I wanted to build it on a diagonal as well. I always have to make it on a diagonal. I think making things on diagonal really helps break up grid. Makes it makes it more organic, makes it more natural. I don't know, something of that nature. But the first thing to do is actually to figure out the entrance of the castle's, like, courtyard slash... Well, yeah, it's like a kind of a courtyard. The stairs that kind of lead up to the castle are enclosed by another fence or a gated, gated walled-off area. Of the main, this is like the main castle's front gates, basically. 
and then I'm using uh, the skeleton there, which I have now named Stanley. So Stanley, I use Stanley for um, peep scale, so I just need to figure out what the scale is for the guests, and Stanley is the perfect size. If you don't change him, change his scale, at, I think it's scale 1 is usually the default, he's perfect to match for doorways, windows, walls, things like that. So Stanley is a very useful tool. I'll be using Stanley for, I've been using Stanley for eons actually. It's like so funny because every creative game that I've run into, there's always a tool that represents a human being. I think Planet Coaster is the arch archer guy, and then now this skeleton dude, Stanley, is our is the one that we use in Parkitect. Um, yeah, there's always going to be a tool within the game that helps with scaling that we're trying to replicate in the real world. Especially when it comes to like measurements and stuff like that. That's why it's good to know that a unit in Parkitect, a grid unit, is 3 meters by 3 meters, which is about 9 feet by 9 feet. So you can guess from there and then go accordingly to whatever scale you're trying to work on. So the first thing I wanted to get is the basics of the castle's building layout. So I made this arch, made a couple um, towers and starting of spires basically, adding some uh, fortified brick things. There. I know there's like terms for castle building pieces, but I don't remember them right now. That's kind of the same idea. I'm doing the old castle brick type of thing. Um, before I actually started working on this castle, I drew up a concept art that I threw up on Instagram and Twitter. And that really helped with the design process for this one, especially with also I had a whole bunch of concept art from, not concept art, but reference photos of the Hong Kong Disneyland Castle, Castle of Dreams. Um, kind of pre-planning helped as well, but for, in this case, this uh, whole, this map entirely actually, for how many hours I put into it, I think I put about 20 something hours into this game, but it's actually been longer than like, I don't know, month, month and a half, but I kind of had a creative block because of the castle. The castle was kind of, I couldn't wrap my brain around starting the castle, so drawing up a concept art on my own actually helped with that process. So I suggest if you're having trouble building a thing or anything, I think a rough concept art helps visualize that idea. And then it starts the groundwork of your processing of building said thing. So I did that. I'm going to, um, what's next? Okay. Um, windows, detailing on the brick walls, gre greeblings or gingerbreading is the term I want to use basically. And then I have the coaster station actually like embedded into the mountain. It's kind of a cool way to kind of hide a coaster actually is inside a castle building or a castle. This would be too expensive in real life, but again, look how much money I have. I have 40, 40k. Right before construction of this castle, I think it was at 50k. So I go through almost all of my money. Almost. Actually, I think I used a um, an advertisement to get the rest of the guest count that I needed. But once I did that, the map was kind of finished. So on to corners of the walls, adding some more shapes. This building is entirely made of shapes, I think. There's no, besides roofing and some walls, but majority of this castle is actually all just shapes. So with the color choices, I really just ripped from the Hong Kong Disneyland castle. So you have your dark tan for the outer walls with the spires with the b blue roofs and then the interior castle part where the where the tallest spire is is all a lighter tan kind of given that contrast and i like that there was a this blue tinted window type of thing this light blue aqua i like that color especially so i did that and again to kind of pull in all the builds in the park to match each other is to do the gradient thing so the gradient roofing actually helps sell the idea of the other uh, buildings in the park um, I think the scale of this castle is actually a little smaller than it should be. But again, I'm also thinking realistically about how a castle is built in Disneyland or in, in Disney parks in general. They're built very, they're built to scale floor level, but then they go down in scale as they go up, giving you the illusion 
of it being taller. It's forced perspective. So I'm kind of doing that here too a little bit, but I think I'm just doing it subconsciously. I just do it at this point. Because I don't think, I think the tower on top of this build can barely hold Stanley if I put him up there. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. He can barely be up there because it's very, very small. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of shape shenanigans going on as I just figure out the shaping of things and capping off some uh, edges. Um, the thing I don't, uh, the thing I try to stay away from, especially with, um, shape building is trying to make sure that the shapes kind of intersect with each other properly instead of like cutting through themselves like a, like a glitched wall or something in a game I kind of want to try to stay away from that so like for here I'm trying to do this specialized or um I wanted a a staircase that kind of wraps around the tower to another door which makes no sense this log logistically makes no sense but it looks cool so there is some clipping of the shapes but I couldn't really get away from that if I was on, like, let's say, Rotation Anarchy and Transform Anarchy, I can make a perfectly spiral staircase. But this is vanilla. I wanted to see what I can pull off with vanilla. And it worked out pretty good. It 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 gives you the sense that it's a spiral staircase up tall on this tower. And it just sells it. That's what I'm trying to portray. And your brain kind of finishes the rest of the idea because it gives an outline. And then you understand the context of said piece on the building so this is just more detailing on the tower itself giving it some more texture what i don't like what i hate the most actually when i build is a surface that is empty and gigantic and wide right like so that's why i don't like paths being empty i like paths to have some texture and coloring and disorder like coloring to it um pl gigantic plain walls i I don't like that. I like to have like little greeblies on it, like let's say vents or pipes. Same thing with like a castle. I want to add some like exposed brick or some, maybe a, a stained stucco or something just to give it some a little bit more characteristics. Because honestly, when you actually look at a wall in real life, it is stained in so many different places. There's nothing is perfect. So I kind of want to try to do that here too in Parkitect, but not as not widely detailed, but just enough to tell you that this is outside. It's been weathered. It's been rained on. It gets dirty, even though. Parkitect is kind of a shiny, <laughs> a shiny game, a shiny little, uh, you build everything in a nice bright colors. So as you can see, the castle is kind of now forming itself and I'm bouncing between doing rock work near the bottom, fixing up some paths, and then finally get to build the coaster with the what, rest of my budget. I think this is the first time I build a um, flying coaster in the scenario. This wasn't modeled by anything in particular I just kind of winged it with the coaster kind of wanted to give it a nice swooping and flying feeling and I thought it could be called dragon rider or something like that so it is called a very simple name there's no dragon because I'm saying that you are riding a dragon you're flying the dragon so there is no dragon creature that I get to build out of shapes which I could build but kind of lazy at this point I think the map is done Sometimes I let the map dictate if it's done or not, but it just, if I stare at it for a little bit and I feel like there's nothing else to add, the map's done. That's kind of how I dictate when a map is done. I can easily come back to this map probably in the next eight to a year, eight months to a year to kind of just add some features, maybe. It's not necessarily that important. So right now I'm going to finish up the coaster's uh, interaction with the hill, I'm going to fix some of the tunnels, add some black shapes to kind of portray that it's darker inside. And then I wanted to paint the coaster a red dragon color and do a gradient style track like they did with Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. And again, um, the whole theme of this whole scenario seems to be gradient colors. I've been kind of messing around with that. It's kind of funny. So that's what we're going to try to do. And then rest is just finishing up some bush, making some bushes, more detailing. As I end a map, it usually turns into just a little bit of um, detailing and cleanup work before taking some screenshots, sending them on their ways, and then there you go. So yeah, let's go quickly go over to a tour and see how the park is running. 
Okay, let's go see how the park is doing. Oh, it's, apparently it's raining. And, well, we're about to get the gold to complete the park. But yeah, this is kind of funny how this ended up in a rain situation. But I should... There we go, finish the park. Well, that was, um... That was a fun one. Well, confetti and rain really shouldn't mix. That's going to be a very messy park at the bottom. But let's quickly fast forward so we get into sunlight so I can show you how the park basically finished. Bas yeah, basically finished. And what I did to it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Where's the rain? Disappear rain. Come on, you can do it. How long is this rainstorm? It shouldn't be this long. Oh, now everything's shut down. You can't even ride the coasters because there's a thunderstorm. E this is a long rainstorm. Wow, I can't believe this is how long this is. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm. Well, I can just, um, yeah, we can just tour the park as it rains, apparently. So the first thing that I built in the park, let's go in order of how this thing went. I built these little buildings here to kind of guess, not guess, it was um, testing, testing out my idea, testing out the thatched roof idea and European style fantasy buildings. And then it kind of progressed here. This was empty for most of the build. These buildings kind of popped up later, but I kind of focused on making my buildings in the back. Ah, there we go. Rain. No more. I wanted to try out this, like, um, what's it called? Um, oh, I forgot the word. I had the word in my head just a second ago. It's the gradient. There it is. That's the word. Gradient coloring on the roof. And same thing with the tavern. Kind of did that, too. Kind of made it very, very fanciful. I based these off, actually, two Lego mocks that I saw on Instagram. That were like these medieval taverns, like kind of what I wanted to go for. And then here's Iron Strike, the LSM launch coaster. It basically is just another um, spaghetti bowl coaster, but it's actually one of my best performing coasters here. It it makes so much money, it's ridiculous. It's charging 15 bucks a head. We got our carousel. Actually, underneath this set of buildings is where is it? Oh, the motion simulator and some other utilities. And then we added this flat run and then this flat right back over here, kind of just putting on together. But honestly, this this scenario is easy to complete once you have a good coaster and a couple flat rides. I, I think you need two coasters actually to beat this scenario and then you're done. It's actually really easy. It's just what was the hard part for me was decorating. I wanted to make this scenario completely different from my others. And that's what I kind of went for. Oh, look, more rain. Fun. And just right when I was about to share my, my uh, wonderful castle that I made... So this castle is the Castle of Imagination. It's kind of the offbeat from the Castle of Dreams from Hong Kong Disneyland. I really wanted to kind of throw my hand into baking some type of very whimsical and majestic looking castle. And on top of that, put on a diagonal because I want to cry at night because I put it at a diagonal. Actually, it wasn't that hard, honestly, to be honest. This is actually quite easy to kind of do on the diagonal because all, all the towers around are hexagons. So there's really no breaking up the... It broke up the grid for me and it really didn't matter. The only hard part I had difficulty was making the staircase thing here. I wanted to give some different texture on top of the tower. And then adding the bricks and stuff kind of maybe was the more tedious part, but not really hard. The only downside about vanilla is that lights really do suck at lim uh, illuminating things. I can't illuminate this tower, that's why I added a fire bit up on top just to add some, a little bit of light. But honestly, I could, well, I might not do it, but if I was modding, doing a modding pay playthrough, I could angle the lights to be more direct up to the, what I wanted to see. But at the end of my build session, this was the last building I needed to touch. So for about a couple weeks, I didn't know what to do or get started so I kind of had to go figure out some things I put on Instagram a concept art of the castle that I was aiming for and I'll just show you here on the screen this is the concept art that I was kind of messing around with but it was a kind of a different exercise to use yeah it was just a different exercise for me to try to build it so that's what I did and then here's the flying coaster this is I think this is the first flying coaster of the playthrough, to be honest. I don't think I've built any other ones yet. So I made it a very gradient red dragon type coaster. It's called Dragon Rider. Uh, there is no dragon because you're flying on the dragon. And it's kind of makes sense to be underneath the castle because this is a very expensive castle <laughs> for such a coaster. But this coaster also makes bank too at this point. I think it makes really good money actually. Let me go look. Let's go find out how much it's made so far. It cost me 10000 to build. 
It's already made 5,000. It's already made half its budget. Wow, that's amazing. So this thing's already making bank. But yeah, this is a flying coaster. Yeah, I, again, I think this is the first one in the playthrough. Yep. So yeah, this is the entire map of Sahilica Slopes. I like where it ended up eventually. Because I have noticed giving myself a plan or a rough idea of what the park will be helps with construction. So giving myself a vision in my head. The vision was a medieval village and castle. And that's where it went. And it turned out better than I hoped for, actually. I really love how majestic this castle and how tall it is. I like this shot. This is a cool shot. So if you took a screenshot like this, you can see how tall the tower is amongst the village. I just think it's ridiculous how that looks. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on in here. Um, I'm going to apologize for all the people who have potato computers that will, won't be able to run this map because this is a lot of objects. Just saying. Sorry in ahead of Vance. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a pretty cool map. So let's quickly... Okay, actually, wait, let me double check. Did I actually win all the goals? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we won everything. So let's quickly save. This time we're actually going to actually save save it because I haven't done it yet. Finished. Look at that. And I think we're going to get um, the little mining hut that pops down. Oh, yeah, it's the little mining hut that's outside that I deleted. It's gone. And speaking of Christmas, wow, look at this. This is the uh, map. It changed. I think it changes right be like three days before Christmas. Because, yeah, this is cool. So we got the last two maps. Oh, not the last two maps. There's this one. We got Robo Park and Sheer Cliffs. So these are good. I um, know that the last map's over here. So Zalgonia will be the last map. But yeah, we have three more maps to go. Wow, that was um pretty cool. So I want to wish you guys a... Um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This will be the last video of 2023. And then into 2024, we'll finish the campaign series of the original campaign. And then maybe I'll take a small break to do maybe some American Adventure stuff. And then maybe go into Taste of Adventure, but I'm not really sure. Or, no, no, well, yes, that's probably, it should do Taste of Adventure. And then after that, I've been thinking about touching my campaign. Oh, I do see it. I see it. I see it. Okay, so... <laughs> if you haven't noticed, the 5th anniversary of Parkitect happened. I put a video up on my channel. You guys should, should go watch if you haven't seen it. But the, there's actually 27 map. There's 27 levels now in the original campaign. There's a new level called um, Happy Co. Bakery that I made for the 5th anniversary, and I suggest you guys go play it. You have to unlock it by beating both campaigns and having both DLCs installed. So once you do that, you get this last um, map unlocked, and it's a bakery-themed um, map. I probably will play that one, actually, after Zelgonia. I'll play it, yes, and decorate it, too. Might as well. So yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I want to thank you to my patrons for the continued support. I really do thank you guys for supporting me, even though my lackluster of posting and life getting away from me. But thank you again for letting me be. And if you guys want to support me on Patreon, you can. It's on the link in the description below. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your winter vacation, wherever you are on the planet. And I will see you guys next year for the continuance of the campaign. Bye.